I am recording from the Bay Area, and I just got word here that the county in which I'm living and six counties around the Bay are now on lockdown, which means that residents of our counties are not allowed to leave our respective counties where we're living. And as of tomorrow, all but non-essential businesses will be shuttering. So it's a really intense time to be here. Um, no matter where you are in the country, I really encourage you to limit your amount of time out of doors. And it's not just necessarily for your sake, it's for the sake of those around you, for the immunocompromised, for the elderly, whether that's you or somebody else, the more contact you are, the more influence you might have. Um, so in the spirit of offering some comfort uh, in, in these challenging times, I'm reading a poem today that's about how to be neighborly um, with a sense of distance. And this poem is called The Sound of One Fork by Minnie Bruce Pratt, a wonderful queer poet. The Sound of One Fork. Through the window screen, I can see an angle of gray roof and the silence that spreads in the branches of the pecan tree as the sun goes down. I'm waiting for a lover. I am alone in a solitude that vibrates like the cicada in hot mid-morning that waits like the lobed sassafras leaf just before its dark green turns into red, that waits like the honeybee in the mouth of the purple lobelia. While I wait, I can hear the random clink of one fork against a plate. The woman next door is eating supper alone. She is 60, perhaps, and for many years has eaten by herself the tomatoes, the corn and okra that she grows in her backyard garden. Her small metallic sound persists, as quiet almost as the windless silence, persists like the steady random click of a red bird cracking a few more seeds before the sun gets too low. She does not hurry. She does not linger. Her younger neighbors think that she is lonely, but I know what sufficiency she may possess. I know what pe can be gathered from year to year gathered from what is near to hand, as I do elderberries that bend in damp thickets by the road, gathered and preserved, jars and jars shining, and rows of claret red, made at times with help, a friend or a lover, but consumed long after, long after they are gone and I sit alone at the kitchen table. And when I sat in the last heat of Sunday afternoons on the porch steps in the acid breath of the boxwoods, I also knew desolation. The week is over, the coming night will not lift. I am exhausted from making each day. My family, my children live in other states, the women I love in other towns. I would rather be here than with them in the old ways but when all that's left of the sunset is the re red reflection underneath the clouds, when I get up and come in to fix supper, in the darkened kitchen, I'm often lonely for them. In the morning and the evening, we're by ourselves, the woman next door and I. Still, we persist. <laughs>